human sensory structures and function. So first of all we will see what is the definition for the sensory receptor. It is a specialized structure that can detect a specific stimulus and convert the energy of the stimulus. It means light energy or sound energy uh, to a change in membrane potential. You know that normal membrane potential is known as resting membrane potential that is about minus uh, 60 to 80 uh, millivolt. So that membrane potential value can be changed due to this energy and create action potential. So that action potential is transmitted to the central nervous system. It means to our brain or spinal cord. So in the central nervous system that action potential can be identified. So that is the sensory perception and interpretation. So these are the things that should be included into the definition. It is a specialized structure that can detect a specific stimulus and convert that stimulus energy to change in membrane potential and finally it is transmitted to the central nervous system as action potentials for sensory perception and interpretation. Then when we take these sensory receptors they can be specialized cells. So in this diagram you can observe a sensory receptor cell or there can be specialized neurons. They are also cells and also there can be organ act as a sensory receptor example our eye and ear then also there are some structures that found within the cells they are subcellular structures they can also act as sensory receptors so the function of the sensory receptor is they can provide informations about the inside of our body and also outside of our body to the central nervous system that is very important to maintain constant internal environment and that is also known as homeostasis. So sensory receptors provide information to the central nervous system to maintain our homeostasis. Specific sensory receptors detect stimuli that arise in external environment. So they are external receptors mainly found in our skin. So they can detect stimuli from external environment like heat or cold. And also there are some internal receptors within our body. They can detect stimuli that arise inside our body like when they are our pH of uh, blood change it can be detected by the internal receptors and also when there is change in the blood osmotic pressure it can be detected by internal receptors. Then what are the basic characters of sensory receptors? They are specialized structure they design to receive a specific stimulus. So when we take our eye it can only receive light energy. So they are specialized to receive specific stimuli. And that stimulus should be at or above the threshold level. Otherwise, the receptor can't detect that. So the stimulus should be at or above the threshold level. Then that receptor can convert that energy of the stimulus to a change in membrane potential. It means due to arrival of the stimulus energy, normal resting membrane potential can be changed up to action potential. So that is conversion of that stimulus energy to a change in membrane potential then finally form action potential it is transmitted to the central nervous system so always these receptors should be connect with the neuron so that is connect with the nervous system then during the conversion of that stimulus energy into action potential 
the sensory signal can be strength so that is known as amplification so even i get very little light energy it can strength that energy and convert into action potential that process is known as amplification so that is one of the character of sensory receptors and also these receptors have adaptation that is known as sensory adaptation if the stimulus that gained by the receptor is continuous at in same level so these receptors can show decrease in resp uh, responsiveness that is the sensory adaptation so to get responsiveness by that receptor the stimulus should be gain above than the previous level so if that stimulus is in same level the receptor can be adapted for that stimulus so there is no generation of action potential so many receptors in our body show this sensory adaptation for an example when we expose to a strong smell we can uh, sense that smell but gradually that smell will be decreases and uh, that sense of that smell will be stopped within few minutes so that is the adaptation of our olfactory receptor then we see what are the types of sensory receptors so these sensory receptors can be categorized based on the nature of the stimulus that they detect so these are the sensory receptors found in our human body chemoreceptors thermoreceptors photoreceptors mechanoreceptors and pain receptors chemoreceptors so these are the sensory receptors that respond to chemical stimuli these chemical substances should be dissolved in water before they reach to the sensory cells and stimulate the sensory cells so there are two types of main chemoreceptors within our body they are taste receptors and olfactory receptors so these taste receptors are important for the sense of taste they are found in our tongue and olfactory receptors they are found in our nose so that is important for the sense of smell those and also there are internal chemoreceptors they can detect the specific chemical such as carbon dioxide in circulating blood so in aorta and also in carotid artery we can observe Uh, sensors for the carbon dioxide or they can detect the decrease in blood ph level because when carbon dioxide concentration is high there can be formation of carbonic acid and when it is dissociated it create h plus ions so that result decrease in blood ph so that uh, chemical factor is detected by the internal receptors they are found in aorta and carotid arteries under chemoreceptors first one taste receptors so there are main five basic types of taste that can be sensed by our tongue they are sweet taste sour taste bitter taste salt taste and the umami taste that is the savory taste so these receptor cells for the taste are modified epithelial cells they are organized into taste buds these taste buds are found in the papillae they are the small projections of our tongue so one taste bud contain taste cells they are the receptor cells and also there are supporting cells and sensory nerve endings are located in one taste bud so the substances that should be tasted first dissolved in the saliva that is the fluid found in our oral cavity then they have to diffuse into the receptor cells so in this diagram you can observe our tongue 
and these are the small projections they are known as papillae so singular word is papilla so they have taste buds so when we take the structure of the taste bud it is composed of taste cells and also there are some cells they act as supporting cells so these supporting cells are not supplied by sensory nerve endings so that is the difference between taste cells and supporting cells they both are located in the taste bud but the uh, taste cells are supported by sensory neurons while uh, uh, the supporting cells are not uh, supported or uh, not supplied by sensory neurons and also there are some sensory hairs at the top of the taste cells so the uh, dissolved substances have to come to these receptor cells then inside these receptor cells action potential can be generated then they are transmit through the sensory neurons towards the cerebrum so brain can be finally perception about the uh, taste then the second type of chemoreceptors they are olfactory receptors so these are specialized neurons they are located within the epithelium of our upper portion of the nasal cavity or at the roof of our nasal cavity so these receptive ends of these cells or neurons extend towards the mucous layer of the nasal cavity when odorants diffuse into these regions through the nostrils then these receptor cells are stimulated finally generate action potential then the form nerve impulse is sent along their axons to the olfactory bulb that locate in our brain then through olfactory tract that nerve impulse is finally transmit to the temporal lobe of our cerebrum for the sensory perception so in this diagram you can observe the nasal cavity so these are olfactory receptor cells they are specialized neurons so they have cilia and this is the mucus layer that found on the epithelial cells of nasal cavity so when odorants are come into the nasal cavity they diffuse in these mucus layer then they can diffuse into these olfactory receptor cells then there is generation of action potential then finally that is transmit to the olfactory bulb of the brain then that action potentials finally transmit through the olfactory tract to the temporal lobe of the cerebrum so after discussing about the chemoreceptors we have to discuss about the thermoreceptors so they are specialized sensitive receptors that can detect heat or cold on the body surface and also temperature of our internal environment thermoreceptors located in our dermis in our skin so they can detect the body surface temperature whereas thermoreceptors found in our hypothalamus can detect the temperature of the blood circulating through internal organs so that temperature is also known as core temperature thermoreceptors found in the hypothalamus they are specialized neurons or they are known as temperature sensitive nerve endings so they detect the core temperature while the thermoreceptors in our dermis detect the peripheral temperature so these are the three types of thermoreceptors found in our dermis crowsus and bulb they detect the low temperature or detect the cold then raffni corpuscles they detect the high temperature or detect the warmth and also there are free nerve endings they can detect the fluctuation of temperature it means they can detect both cold and warm conditions third type of receptor they are photoreceptors so they are sensitive for the light there are main two types of photoreceptors in our retina in our eye they are rods and cones 
when we take rods they are more sensitive to light but they can't distinguish colors so uh, because they are very sensitive to light these are very important for the night vision but uh, the image is given as black and white so the visual pigment that found in these rods is known as rhodopsin second type is cones so they provide us the color vision and uh, they contribute very little to light a night vision because they are less sensitive for the light so for the stimulation of cones there should be high light intensity so they are very they are not important for the night vision they are important for our day vision and there are three types of cones so each has a different sensitivity across the visual spectrum providing an optimum response for the red green and blue light so there are main three types of cones one type is more sensitive for the red light then other type sensitive for the green and uh, third type is sensitive for the blue light so the uh, different proportions of stimulation of these three types of cones enable to uh, visualize different colors the visual pigment found in cones is known as photopsin the next type is mechanoreceptors so they are response to stimuli uh, from mechanical energy deformation such as pressure touch stretch motion and sound so these are the stimuli that can detect by the mechanoreceptors so one type is known as touch receptors they are sensitive for the touch so they should be present close to the surface of the skin so there are main three types meissner corpuscles they are sensitive for the light pressure and merkel disc they are sensitive for the light touch so free nerve endings they are sensitive for the normal touch the second type of mechanoreceptor is known as pressure receptors they are sensitive for the deep pressure so they should be found in our deep skin or deep of our dermis they are pacinian corpuscles third type of mechanoreceptor is known as vibration receptors and most of the touch receptors can also can act as vibration receptors because they can detect the vibration of touch and pressure so they are meissner corpuscles that sensitive for the light pressure and pacinian corpuscles they are sensitive for the deep pressure so they can be also considered as vibration receptors and also in our inner ear there is a duct called cochlear duct so in this cochlear duct there is a organ that is known as organ of corti they detect the sound vibration and these are another type of vibration receptors they are found in the inner ear in the vestibule region there are two regions called utricle and saccule so here there are hair cells they can detect the gravity and also in semicircular canals they have also hair cells they can detect the motion or angular movements so these things will be deeply discussed in the structure of the ear final type is pain receptor so they detect stimuli that reflect harmful condition that could arise from extreme pressure or extreme temperature or due to certain chemicals so they can damage the tissue by pressure temperature or chemicals if there is any damage of the tissue is happen so that can be detected by these pain receptors so there are some special nerve endings in different parts of our body mainly in our skin so they can detect the tissue damage 
So finally, action potential is generated in these pain receptors. Then they are sent to the brain. So ultimately, pain is perceived by the brain. So these are the main types of receptors that you have in your syllabus.